Do you think that unconditional love is possible? Uncritical, unconditional, no strings attached, accept you for who you are kind of love? Between two adults? Yes. No. Neither do I. Not anymore. It's almost like I've come full circle, you know. I'm from a blushing adolescent to a bitter divorce A to hopeful. I'm hopeful about love. It's like I've come around a corner. And I think I'm ready now for some good old seriously flawed, deeply compromised, conditional love between two battle-scarred, semi-mature adults who have loads of life experience and tons of disappointments and a whole bunch of unrealistic expectations and a full set of emotional baggage to bring to the big dance. That sounds like fun to me. morning. Don't give up those charm lessons, Kobach. Well, a day is super, Roger. What is with Mr. Sunshine? You think I'm here because I want to be? You think I'd rather be here than home with my kids? You bet your life, no. Just because I have to work does not mean that I have to take abuse from that man. Five minutes of grief he gave me just because I call my mother more than once a year. He'd like to see you now. Brace yourself. You are not listening, Valerie. I told you, it's a waste of time and the taxpayer's money. But I think if I can show... No. If I can show with the public sentiment... No! I'll come back. Stay. Now, they have offered you a good deal, and you will advise your client to take it. You're not going to go to trial in every case, Valerie, just to get your name in the newspaper. I just think that Take the I... deal, Valerie. Yeah. Take the deal! I know she likes to grandstand, but she's new at this. It takes a while to learn how to pick your spots. You're late. Twelve minutes. What is going on? The day's barely started, and you've already unloaded on Valerie Kovach. Kovach? You force Kovach on me. And you keep your eye on him, Rosie. His paperwork is unacceptable. He's been here a month. No disrespect, Ben, but you've been in a rotten mood for weeks. We are losing the battle, Rosie. I haven't you noticed? Public searches without probable cause. No recourse to mistreatment in prison. Carte blanche to the police to force confessions in any way they can. Look, I don't like the Supreme Court rulings any more than you do, Ben. But this bump looks more personal than political, if you ask me. Which I didn't. You wanted to see me about something? Yeah, I did. Okay. I've got a terrific therapist if you want the number. No. Thank you. You're welcome. He was strong as a mule, Stanley. 
little shortness of breath, that was all. But Dr. Varick, did he tell Stanley to take the stairs a little slower? No. He doesn't make money that way. He put him through test after test. Finally ran him into the ground, killed him right there in his office. So uh, at the time of the incident, you were overcome with anguish from the loss of your husband. Anguish? Nothing. Do you know what that quack said to me? He said, these things happen. My condolences. That was it. No explanation at all. Then he ducked my calls for a week. So your mind was clouded by grief when you returned to Dr. Varick's office. My mind was clear as a bell. I wanted him to look me in the eye and confess. Stanley didn't need those tests. Varick ran them for the money. He killed my Stanley and made a profit on it. Encountering Dr. Varick in the heat of the moment, then you impulsively picked up a pair of scissors that happened to be close at hand. Had my own scissors in my purse. I took the bus all the way down to his office, and that SOB still wouldn't talk to me. Tried to brush me aside like a mosquito. So I grabbed my scissors and I went for him. Just sorry I was slow. I would have got more than his arm. Uh, Kate, you're being charged with attempted murder here. Um, we can only get you out of jail before the trial if you can make it clear that you regret what you did. You mean put on an act? No. I, look, I am sorry about your loss, and, and I would be happy to find you a malpractice attorney to represent you against Dr. Varick if you wish. But taking your own revenge is not going to bring back your husband. Tell me that you understand that, Kate, so that I can tell it to the judge. <clears throat> Kate. She has no history of violence and no criminal record. She's clearly not a danger to society, Your Honor. Mr. Ramey, we're concerned with the safety of Dr. Varick, Your Honor, but I have no argument regarding Mrs. Langston's character. All right. I'll release you on your own recognizance, Mrs. Langston, on your promise to return to this court and on your promise to stay away from Dr. Varick. You are not to annoy him or contact him in any way or get within 500 feet of his home, his office, or his person. Now, do you agree to those terms, Mrs. Langston? Yes, Your Honor. Good. Now, I'll continue this case two weeks from today, 8.30, in this courtroom. We'll take a 20-minute recess. All right, you've signed some papers, collect your things at the jail. I don't want you to go home and take it easy, all right? Kate? Aren't you going to thank me? For what? Well, I could have made a big stink about the bail. I don't think the citizens of Los Angeles are going to lose any sleep because Kate Langston's on the loose. What do you say we put this one to bed? Is that right? Six months probation for simple assault. Since when is attempted murder simple assault? So much fun in law school, Suzanne. How did you get on the wrong side? Work is work, remember? She's 72 years old. I'll do what I can, OK? You free for dinner? No. Not tonight, actually. Do you remember my friend Ray from Harvard? Sure, I remember the ponytail. Well, he cut his ponytail off 16 years ago. But he's here from Portland for a week. I haven't seen him in a year. Long-distance romances are a bitch. This may come as a shock to you, Suzanne, but there are male-female relationships that don't include sex. Really? Yes. Well, in that case, give me a night next week. I met the most fabulous guy at the flea market on Sunday, an architect, no less. And his partner is even cuter than he is. Now, I know that you don't like blind dates, but this one is a winner. Heaven forbid you should have a nice time. I don't think so. Thanks, anyway. That is the problem with you. You think too much. The parade is going to pass you by, and you're going to be standing there thinking. Why is it that everyone I know feels the obligation to set me up on dates? Because it's human nature to want your friends to be happy. I don't equate dating with happiness. I equate it with sticking needles in my eyes. <laughs> you are hopeless. Just say hi to Ray for me. I will. Bye. You rang? Yeah. What are you doing here this late? Paperwork. Spelling a few words wrong along the way. Deliberately? You're going to drive Ben out of his mind. Payback. Listen, I need some background information on Stanley Langston's cardiologist. His name's Varick. What do you want to know about him? 
Whether or not he's unethical. He's a doctor. He's unethical. I'm not positive the jury will take your word for it. Anything else? Yeah, give me as much as you can. Does he take kickbacks from clinics? Does he run too many tests? You know the drill. What are you doing here so late? Cleaning up. And I'm having dinner with somebody. A female somebody? No. But just friends, though, huh? Uh, you ought to try for real sometime. Excuse me? Well, dinner and whatever. There's a lot worse than you out there. Well, that's very sweet. I'm a very sweet guy. I hope you like peppermint swirl. It's all I've got. Anything to take the edge off the chili. Your place looks great. Thanks. Remind me to thank him for saving me the trouble of turning on the lights. Teenagers are aliens, kiddo. Might as well get used to it. Whew. Hey, Kim, I thought Hi. you were going to the library. Nina went. I was just on my way now to her house to pick up the book. Remember Ray? Yeah, sure, Radio Ray. Hi. Hi. You know, it was your kid who got me in so much trouble when he said I was the one who threw fizzies in Dad's pool. <laughs> well, Paul was never real big on full disclosures. <laughs> Look, I listened to your show this week, and I just love hearing other people's problems. Oh, I hope you don't mind I ate all the ice cream. Right. Yeah. Oh, hey, Ray, give us a minute. Yeah. Hey, Kimmer. Hmm? You don't have to go. Oh, hey, no problem. Look, you need your privacy, and uh, he's cute. He's not a date, Kim. Even if he were, you don't have to clear out. This is your house now, too. Yeah, but if you want to bring a date home... He's not a date! But if you want to, it's okay. Look, Rosie, you're a grown-up. It's okay to have sex. Safe sex. I'll remember that. <laughs> Kim, you can stay. Look, I'll be home by 10.30, okay? Oh, but I'll call first. You know, just in case. Kid. Yeah, she has a vivid imagination. Thanks. Cheers. I hope she's all right. Well, it sounds like to me that she's better off here than with Patrick and bride number, what, three? Three. <laughs> so do you miss him? Patrick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Well, mostly no. Why, you miss Linda? Yeah, sometimes. You know those moments when the loneliness really hits? Well, they're the worst. Because that's when you start really thinking about all the good times. Forget about all the bad. Yep. And what really gets me is when my callers call and give me grief. They say, Dr. Ray, if you're such an expert, then why did your own marriage fall apart? <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to take care of yourself, Ray. Hey, who's the... Pop psychologist here, anyway. Huh? <laughs> so where's my surprise? Right. All right, stay right there. Close your eyes. Yes. Now just relax. You shouldn't get overstimulated at your age. Hey, watch it, sweetheart, because you have to be three weeks older than me. <laughs> Don't remind me. Are they closed? Yes, tight. All right. Keep them closed. I'll tell you when. Not yet. Not yet. Now. Hey, Johnny Mathis. Surprise! Uh, chances are. <laughs> Is this an original? Ray, please. Yeah, I gotta play it. Where's your play? Right back here. Oh, God. Good, huh? Chances are. Don't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> there were three of us at Wellesley, but you were the only one at Harvard who had the guts to admit you like Johnny Mathis better than the Grateful Dead. I, I didn't like I dug Johnny Mathis. You dig? <laughs> I dig. <laughs> you remember his concert at the Garden? Sure. You and I were the only two people there who opposed the bombing in Cambodia. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you had that, that suede vest. Remember with all the oh, fringe? Oh, God, yeah. And you had on the pea coat that we bought uh, at the surplus store there. On the... Central Square. <laughs> were we too hip to live, huh? Oh, just too <laughs> hip. Oh. Hmm. So you like it? Hmm. I love it. Oh, I'm glad. Yes. In the magic of moonlight, when I saw. 
jeepers. Chances are you believe the stars that fill the skies are in my eyes. You stopped? Why did you stop? Well, it's insane. He is a friend, Doreen. A pal. Even now, we're starting to act differently with each other, and all we did was kiss. Oh. I love Dre. He's not dead, Rosie. What if we do go to bed together, and it's terrific, and we get involved, and then we break up? Jeez, that was quick. What I'm saying is, I could lose a friend, a very good friend who knows all my secrets, makes me laugh when I'm down. You know, I bought him boxer shorts for graduation. You know the kind with the little buffalo on them? Yeah. He still has them. Rosie, aren't you getting a little bit ahead of yourself? I mean, why not just take it one step at a time? See how it goes. I don't know, Doreen. It's so strange. No, I just never thought of Ray, you know, with his clothes off. I mean, I've seen him with his clothes off, but not with my clothes off, you know what I mean? Yep. Sounds like you want to sleep with him. Well, we're not talking lust off the Richter scale here, but maybe that's my problem. Look what happened with Patrick. Once the lust was gone, there really wasn't a whole lot left. At least I like Ray. That's a plus. He lives in Oregon. That's a minus. You've heard of the friendly skies? Besides, I thought you told me that he was going to come down here and live, even if he doesn't get a full-time job at the station. Huh. I don't know. Maybe it'd be nice making love with a friend. It would be wrong, Doreen. We said we'd think about it, so I'm just going to think about it. You knew he was such a good kisser. Hi, Mom. Hi, darling. Oh, forgive me. Sax was mobbed. I'm sorry I couldn't wait. <sighs> Don't apologize. I know you're busy. I just wish you wouldn't wolf. Mom, Rosie saw Ray Waverly last night. Ray Waverly? From Harvard. Oh, I always liked Ray. No, you didn't. He had hair halfway down his back. He burned his draft card. You couldn't stand him. That's not true. Your father couldn't stand him. I just kept my opinion to myself. I always admired his spirit. How's he doing? Fine. Divorced. Wonderful. Mother. Well, no, it's tragic, I'm sure. But it is wonderful for you, sweetheart. You're perfect for each other. Another minus. Mother approves. Kate, you were supposed to stay away from Dr. Varick, period. Do you know what that so-called doctor did? He cleaned out his files and sent me Stanley's x-rays. No note, nothing. Just pictures of my dead husband's heart. Why did you go back to his office? Just to give him a piece of my mind. We're honest people, Miss O'Neill. Stanley cooked and I waited tables. We never made much money. But we could look you in the eye and say we never treated anyone without respect. I can't get my husband back. But I sure can let that doctor know what happens when you pull that kind of crap on us. You've made this very difficult for us, Kate. I'm sorry. But Stanley would have done the same for me. No malpractices? No. No ethics reviews? No. There's no Medicare flags? No, no, no. Nothing here. You and the porcelain schnauzer and the patio furniture. Barracks clean if you can believe the record. And you don't? Nobody's that clean. What about Stanley Langston's course of treatment? I got two guys say it's all on the square. He died during an electrophysiological study. It happens sometimes. But it's proper medicine. Remind me not to get one of those. I need a lever on this guy. Hey, you ask me, I think they're all thieves. 
But unless you can nail this guy on his lousy bedside manner, you're out of luck. I believe my client, Kovach, she said her husband wasn't that sick. Did he get a second opinion? No. What if Varick exaggerated his diagnosis? If there wasn't a second opinion, he could say anything he wanted. He could run every test under the sun. Well, it's the only open window we've got. How do you propose to get in it? When did you have your last physical? I do have a little pain right here. What the hell is wrong with you, Mason? I wouldn't accept this from a grade one for crying out loud. And you've had a month to prepare for this trial. Thought I had a deal. Oh, I see. And after nine years, you don't know that deals can fall through, right? That you have to be prepared. I couldn't get a continuance. Of course you couldn't get a continuance. Rupenthal was appointed by the governor of the state. He is on their side. Ben. If you botch this trial, I'll have you censured. That goes for all of you people. We are losing the battle, folks. Did you hear what I said? We are losing the battle. I don't know what's wrong with you, Ben. But if you don't take care of it right away... There is nothing wrong with me, Hank. Look, we'll be all right here. Why don't you just take a little time? Yeah. I think I will. I hear this every day, Claire. If he really loved me, he would this. Or if she really loved me, she would that. Uh-uh. It's a flag on the play. If you really love each other, you will listen. Just listen. You'll be amazed by what you hear. And you might even like it. And that's a wrap, Los Angeles. I'm Dr. Ray Waverly for This Can't Be Love, KLCA 680 on your AM dial. I'll be here through the week from 4 o'clock till 8 to take your calls and ponder the eternal question, who did put the ram and the ram a lama ding dong Go easy on each other, okay? Excellent, Raymond. Excellent. Well, thank you, Fiona. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I've been doing a lot of thinking. Well, I was hoping you wouldn't have to do a lot of that. Ray, just... Okay, okay, okay. So what have you been thinking? Well, I've been thinking about that time in college when I was getting over the flu. And you came and picked me up and you took me into the city for a concert and dinner. I hadn't been out of the dorm for two weeks and I looked really terrible. And you made me feel like there was no other person you'd rather be with. There wasn't. You're my friend. My mother loves you, too, but we can get past that. <laughs> Are you hungry? Well, I could eat. Maybe we should check out the room service. Your mother hated me. Here we are. Maybe we should turn on the light. Oh, yeah. This is a really nice room. I've never been to this hotel before. Well, uh, make yourself comfortable. It's not exactly Dom Perignon, but it will do in a pinch. You.
Here's to old friendships and new. Does it seem bright in here to you? Yeah, maybe. Should I turn them off? Well, not off. Maybe just down a little. Could we take off our jackets? I can't move my arms. <laughs> sure, I don't mind. Okay. You don't have to hang it up. No, you don't want it to wrinkle, you know. Well, it gets in. Whatever. Yeah. Now, don't worry about my shirt. If you want to. Rip the buttons off, you can feel free to do such because I have plenty of them, okay? Okay, thanks. So, where were we? <laughs> what? You have on your buffalo boxers. <laughs> no, I framed them. Still hungry? Mm -hmm. Ravenous. Mm -hmm. How about a little Cajun place in Westwood? Sounds terrific. As long as they don't serve buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you laugh at him? In his face? Well, not at him, at the situation. Oh, I couldn't help it. Oh, that's very, very smooth, O'Neill. Uh, rule number one, comedy mm -hmm. and romance do not mix. No, no. Mm -mm. So, I mean, that was it. It was um, dinner and goodbye. That was it. Aww. I tried to kiss him goodnight, but yeah. he burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty passionate, huh? Ooh, be very still, cute. my heart. Oops. Goodbye. Later, later. Hey, you are. You want me to keep going? Been on there long enough. <laughs> So, uh, what do you think? Uh, inconclusive, right? <laughs> For a man your age, your EKG is very strong. Uh, uh but I, I got these, I got these pains. What about these pains? I want to see the results of your blood work first. My guess is you've got heartburn. Oh, oh come on, Doc. You know, you're gonna send me home? Yeah, I, I got, uh, I got insurance. Uh, you don't have anything to tell me? Lose 50 pounds. Two investigators out sick, 37 new cases this morning, and the damn copy machine is broken. No wonder Ben's losing it. 12 years in this job, I'd be ready to walk out myself. How's he doing? Yeah, he says he's all right. He would, you know. He's always there for everybody else, but he won't let anybody be there for him. Give him my best, okay? Listen, what am I supposed to do about this doctor? Now, you can't scare him away from the courtroom? He's got nothing to hide. Kovart saw him this morning. Said he's a cold fish. 
But ethically, he could give Marcus Welby a run for his money. How about giving his heartstrings a tag? He won't talk to me. He has his lawyers return my call. I have done everything short of sending him a singing telegram. If he testifies against us, we're sunk. And you want to know what Ben would say in this situation, right? You're in the hot seat. You're sunk. Hi. Now, of course I want to talk to you. Just had to wait till my office cleared out. <laughs> no, I apologize. You apologize. <laughs> You're so funny. Yes, I thought about it. And no, I don't think we made a mistake. Why do you think we made a mistake? Good. I just think that we should take it easy, slow. How's tonight? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, Patrick's taking Kim to the Laker game, so. Look, I gotta run. Seven o'clock? Perfect. You need something? Three weeks on the Danube, but not as bad as you need this. Thought you folded your tent on the Langston case. You just don't get it, do you? ask you how you got this. Kovac, you better watch out or I'll have to pay you a compliment. Sitting with a source, who cares? Yeah. Hello, this is Rosie O'Neill calling. Yeah, I know Dr. Varick won't take my calls. Just give him a message for me, will you? Tell him to listen to KLCA radio between 440 and 445. It's important. Thank you. Now, I don't know about you, but most of the doctors I meet these days scare the wits out of me, especially the young ones. Sure, they're well-trained and skillful. But when you're lying on that table with your life in their hands, you want some compassion, too even though if it isn't covered in the insurance. I want to read you something that does give me a, a bit of hope. It was written by a young medical school applicant some 12 years ago. I plan to devote my life to a humane form of medicine, treating people, not just symptoms. Look, Miss O'Neill, you are very effective. You got me to listen. I admire your tenacity. And I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I was a little humbled by my own words. But that doesn't change the reality that your client came after me with a pair of scissors. In your words, it was his kindness, his empathy, his caring that healed me. Did you apply that same compassion to Kate Langston, doctor? Miss O'Neill, I had very little to do with Mrs. Langston. Her husband didn't want her to know how sick he really was. And I think it really is debatable whether or not I was negligent in the way that I treated her. I'm not sure she was my responsibility. Look, I don't condone my client's behavior, but from where I sit, and from where you started your career, I would say that you had some culpability. What should I have done in your view, Miss O'Neill? Prepared her, comforted her, just shown her some compassion. And if I decide not to testify against her, would you consider that to be a reasonable expression of my empathy? Yes, I would. At least to keep a 72-year-old woman out of jail, Doctor. All right, Miss O'Neill. All right, but I need her to promise that she will not disrupt my office. She will stop this vendetta. No more attacks, no more letters to the editor. I want this over and done with. Can I have your word? I'll speak to my client first thing in the morning. Thank you, Doctor. So everybody arrives. They can't get in, and they have to call off the final exams. There was this huge uproar. And they thought we did it because we were protesting the war, when actually... Actually, you didn't study for the final exam. Because you kept me up all night talking about Joanne Baker. <laughs> 
Oh, what a waste. When I had the real thing right there in front of me the whole time. You want some more moose? Well, she knows when to change the subject. She's warm, she's witty, and she can't cook to save her life. More flaws to come. I know you, O'Neill. Yeah, I know you do. So what's a guy got to do to get a brandy around here? Dance with me. Dance with you. Dance with me. Am I stepping on your feet? No. Are my hands sweaty? <sighs> Rosie. Huh? We're not laughing. No. No. I'm sorry. Don't be. This is pretty embarrassing. It's all right. I better go. You don't have to. I just don't think I should be here when Kim gets back. We can only keep him from testifying if you honestly accept the truth, Kate. There is nothing wrong with my husband. Kate, Stanley was trying to protect you. He loved you very much, and he didn't want you to know how sick he really was. Stanley and I never had secrets. 51 years together, and we told each other everything. Nothing we have turned up indicates malpractice. Dr. Varick pursued a very conservative course of treatment. Dr. Varick's lying. Kate, I know this is tough on you, but I think it's time for you to let go now. He's getting away with murder. Well, he may have been rude to Stanley and to you, but he hasn't done anything medically or ethically wrong. Doctors are supposed to make people better. They ask you to put yourself in their hands, to trust them, to take care of the people you love. It's like they were gods. But they're not. They're only human. Nobody could have saved your husband. Why didn't Stanley tell me? Yeah, I'm so sorry, Kate. I know you loved him very much. Why did he have to go first? <sighs> So, there you are. Hi. Hi. These just came for you. Oh. Nice, huh? Yes. Hmm. New admirer? A 
friend. At least I hope he's still a friend. I think I hope he's still a friend. Oh, well, it's very nice. Mm. How are you doing? Well, I'm not quite sure. Calmer. Good. Mm. Yeah. I know I've been in a foul mood recently. Industrial strength. My first cousin, Leo, died last month. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we weren't very close. In fact, I despised him. He was lazy, dishonest, a Republican. And that was the reason for the funk? No. The problem is he was 53 years old, and he died quite suddenly, as did my father at the same age, as did my grandfather. And you're... 52, nine months, and three weeks, and two days. Is there a common cause? Yeah, for them. They smoked, they drank like Bolsheviks. They made your friend Kovach look anorexic. Well, there you go. You don't have anything to worry about. Of course, logically. Look, Dan, I, I can't put myself in your shoes, but I, I hope you're not going to worry yourself into an early retirement. Right. That's what Harriet says. She threatened to kick me out unless I stopped reading the obituaries and practicing. And go back to work and apologize. As always, Harriet's right. So, I apologize. Accepted. So, you're all right now? No, hardly. There's too much to do in too little time, whether my days are numbered or not. So, Rosie, if I forgive less and demand more, no matter how the odds are stacked against us, please remember, it always comes with the greatest respect. Enjoy the flowers, Rosie. Good night. Night. Flowers, huh? You really are one hell of an investigator. Flowers usually mean one of two things. He wants in or he wants out. Both in your court. Do I pry into your personal life? Personal life? My big plans for the night are trying to figure out how not to cut myself opening the can. These flowers are a gesture of friendship. He wants out. So do you have a crisis or not? She says we do, but I don't want to admit it. Wait, wait, that, that's like saying that I don't want to admit that there's a typhoon outside, so I'm going to take my canoe out and paddle it around for the fun of it. Listen, Jake, if she says that there is a crisis, you have a crisis. Don't pretend that it doesn't exist. Dr. Ray Waverly, for this can't be love, KLCA 680 on your AM dial, where the stimulation never stops. You can reach me at 555 KLCA. So let's go to Mystery Caller in Santa Monica. I love a good mystery. Hi, Dr. Ray. Hi. See, I have this good friend. You know, the kind that. You meet when you're young, and then years later, you just sort of pick up where you left off? They're hard to find. Uh, the problem is, is that we've been trying to turn the relationship into something that it isn't. And it just isn't working out. I never could, really. Um, <clears throat> so how do I tell this person that I don't have another friend like him? And I think it's more important that we talk about our lovers than to be lovers. Well, I suppose you could just tell him. Do you think? Without hurting his feelings? If he's a good a friend as you say he is, I'm sure that he'll feel the same way. In fact, he'll probably feel a hell of a lot better. 
Thanks, Dr. Ray. Thank you. Well, let's change gears here for a minute. I've got my own message for a friend. Chances are, cause I wear a silly grin the moment you come into view. Hi. Hi. Do you mind if I change the station? Don't you dare. You have such corny taste in music, Rosie. <laughs> Just because my composure sort of slips the moment that your lips meet mine, chances are you think my heart's your vow. 